All right, Glitch, I'm going to try to do a webcam uh, response to your uh, true story. I've got three stories. I'll try to tell them quickly. Uh, the first story is a story about a spare tire, or no, a tire coming off a truck in the freeway, which made me think about uh, my part in society. Because the decision I made was different than the decision everyone else made on the freeway at that moment. Mulligan. Like Uh, all right, check it out. This truck uh, in the passing lane uh, loses its tire. Actually, it loses part of the axle as well. So the truck starts to veer off to the right. The tire kind of moves to the center of the road, and everyone slows way down and backs off from it. And uh, we and actually, people start to spread out a little bit and give each other room to maneuver. Um, and the slowing down lets everybody behind know that something's gone awry. And uh, the tire is heading down the center of the road, and it starts to veer off towards the, the divider, the freeway divider, which makes me think this thing is still moving like 50 miles an hour. It makes me think this thing is going to hit that divider and come back in a random fashion. And uh, so everyone's still slowing down, and I'm driving along in my minivan, and I'm the only person, I was like several cars back, who slammed on the gas. I have like an overdrive in my minivan, it turns out. <laughs> I was like the Millennium Falcon, just... Uh, so I just jet ahead. At one point in time, uh, I actually, I passed the uh, tire right as it touched the, uh, the, the, the wall, the, in the, the crash wall in the center. Um, and then it came moving back in, and... And yeah, the uh, the axle hit the ground, and then it went chaotic. So, uh, you know, I think that the right thing to do is what everyone was doing, which is slow down, you know, kind of bring traffic to a halt, let that tire come to a rest somehow, and then move around it. Um, if everyone slammed on the gas and tried to race by it, that would have been a little nuts. I think it's interesting that, like, my idea was, like, I don't know, I was trying to think of it, like, is, was it, what, was I, like, the first into the lifeboat in a disaster, you know, or, uh, you know, every man for himself kind of thing, or was I, like, um, not only the chaotic nature of that random attire might come into uh, uh, the mass of humanity still driving 50 miles an hour on the freeway, like, you know, if I want to, like, you know, roll the dice, you know, I want, you know, as little dice as possible, <laughs> I want to make sure that I have as much control as possible, so, but, uh, yeah, that was something else, that was something else, that was, actually, it was a really big piece of metal, that, the axle was pretty large. Uh, second story was, uh, one of those stories that I, almost makes you wish that somebody, uh, that as things happen, it made, makes you wish that you would have kept quiet, so, uh, my friend's uh, pulling his, uh, if my friend's, okay, my friend's driving down the highway, right? And then he go. he says, uh, he says out loud, so he's what witnesses, he says, what's this jackass doing? Um, and here comes like this vehicle up alongside the right. And then he realizes, wait a minute, that's not a vehicle, it's someone's horse trailer. He went, ha, 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 someone lost their horse trailer. And then his third thought was, hey, that's my horse trailer. Which, you know, of course, alarmed him and he was concerned. But I thought, it, you know, the whole thing of, like, it's funny when it happens to somebody else. And then, wait a minute, that's my horse trailer that's currently passing me on the highway. Uh, no horses in the horse trailer, by the way. All right, now the best story, which is the, uh, the real story of the kidnapping of my friend Theo. Uh, Theo was going away on a vacation. He was going to be gone for a week. And... Uh, I saw him about almost a year later. Actually, I worked with him, so he lost his job and no one heard from him. Um, he went down to Mexico, and uh, Theo's like, uh, he's like a, he's like, he's a sparkle pony for sure. He's like, uh, he was like a bodybuilder, a model. He did nude modeling. Uh, he was an artist. Uh, he was into performing arts. He was really into characters. Uh, he'd often show up to hang out, and he'd be like a certain guy. Um, and he'd, he'd just play that part. You just got used to it. Uh, he was really good at it, actually. And uh, so we went down to Mexico, and from what I understand, uh, people were calling him Axl Rose. Um, 
I think he was down there playing a part, somebody that was involved in the music industry and rich and um, you know, he just re he invented this this mythical hymn when he was down there and uh, but one thing uh, that he did, didn't really check into that much and uh, I guess I didn't I didn't start traveling until much later so I thought ahead of time that there's there's going to be like a lot of hidden cultural differences um, and so you can't take anything for granted so uh, he met some girls dancing and uh, got on with one uh, particular girl and uh, invited her back to uh, his hotel and. Uh, that kept up for a couple of days. She just kind of like moved into his hotel. Uh, then he hears a knock at the door, and uh, it's the girl's father, and uh, uncles and uh, brothers and neighbors and uh, you know, people that work on the, the farm, and uh, they have weapons. And she's like, "No, father, do not kill him. Do not kill him." <laughs> uh, and so it looks like it looks like they're going to kill Theo and then uh, <laughs> people are walking by <laughs> hi <laughs> um, so it looks like they're going to kill Theo and so the girl goes but I am pregnant with his baby and they're like what? what? wait do not kill him <laughs> and so these people take Theo. Uh, there's all these cars out front. They take him out of his hotel room, take all his stuff, load him into the truck. This is at night. Uh, they drive all night long. Theo ends up in this farm. He has no idea where he's at. And uh, they say, uh, "You, uh, you got my, uh, you got my daughter pregnant. The only way you're going to live through this is uh, to marry my daughter." And uh, Literally, there was a shotgun at the wedding, and I said, "Well, did they treat? I mean, was it an aggressive wedding? Was it an angry wedding?" He says, "No, the wedding was like really joyous. All her family members, uh, people from all around, it was like a massive party. Everyone was really excited and treated me really nice. But at no point in time did he just not. There was always a weapon, <coughs> excuse me, present. Not you know directed at him, but you know, they had they had their shotguns handy." And so Theo lived on this farm, and uh, his so his his new persona was a, a happy uh, a happy groom. Uh, he was like uh, he he became their son, and he was so in love with their daughter, and he was just so so very happy there, until uh, as the months went on, they started watching him less and less closely, uh, where he ran for it in the middle of the night. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, he escaped. Uh, they had all his stuff, like, so he escaped with nothing. And uh, worked his way back to the United States. Not, uh, not worked his way, but, you know, like, basically hitchhiked. And uh, um, I think he sent to a woman he knew here in Portland for money. And uh, I think that's how he was able to get back. Because when he came back, he was, like, he was a different man. He was a tiny bit... Uh, uh, you could tell he'd been through one of the most stressful stressful experiences uh, that he'd ever encountered in his life. He seemed a little deflated. He seemed deflated. He wasn't the same super confident uh, young man. And so he basically he got adopted by this woman that sent him money. It was basically it was a sugar mama. He said, "Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm doing carpentry work and stuff like that on this woman's house for free room and board, that kind of thing." And I'm like, "What? You do woodworking? I've never heard of that." He's like, "Oh yeah, I know all about woodworking." And then uh, eventually I went over there for a party, and he didn't know anything about woodworking. He was just a boy toy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying just a boy toy, because I know being a boy toy is a, an important thing. But uh, he, I, he wanted to hide it, and she was just so upfront about it. Like, she's just like, oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy to have my man here. <laughs> oh, yeah, so yeah, there, there you go. True story. Uh, the tire, uh, the... Uh, the horse trailer and the kidnapping of uh, my friend Theo. All right, glitch. Hopefully this won't be. Uh, hopefully this. I've only tried this once before, so hopefully this works.